So before getting into this video, I just want to preface that if you just want a basic understanding of how rail signals work, I would definitely suggest checking out my first video, which will give you all the basics. And, um, and then if you wanted to learn more, you can come back to this video. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to go over is a chain signal, which is this brass looking block here. Um, this is the same as the, tra the, the train signals, but uh, you just use a wrench on it and it turns into a chain signal. Now what these do is they simply repeat what the signal in front of them is displaying. So for example, this regular train signal is showing a, uh, a white light, which means go, and the chain signal will show the exact same white light. So the purpose of chain signals is to basically make sure that a train will never stop inside of an intersection. So it will either stop before an intersection and wait until it can fully pass through it, or it will just go fully through it when it has space. So as, as with before, where if you only used regular signals, a train would stop, um, could potentially stop in the middle of the intersection, which would block other trains from going through. So it is slightly less efficient or potentially much more inefficient. So before you start putting down chain signals everywhere, you need to first determine what train size you're using. So this is important because let's say that I have a very large train, this one here, and I want it to go through this intersection. So it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And let's say something blocks it here at this chain signal. Let's say there's a train in front, so it can't go through. You can see because of how long this train is, it's actually still in the intersection, uh, even though it was allowed to go through. So what's the purpose of the chain signal? Basically, the problem with this is this should be a chain signal here. If this train could not go all the way through, and let's pretend that this is red, if this train could not pass through this next signal, then it shouldn't have even started going through the intersection because we know that it would end up blocking it. So once you figure out the length of the train that you want to use, that determines where you're using chain signals. So let me bring this back and I'll show you um, with the smaller one now. So I have the small train now and if I coming through here, just like the last time, and let's say once again, it is blocked by something in front of it. You can see now that these signals are red and the intersection is clear. So this is exactly how you want it to work. You want the intersection to be clear while there is a, uh, a blockage. So let's say that this block here, which is what I'll be calling it from now on instead of section in the previous video, this block is full and therefore this signal does not allow anything to enter it. And this chain signal doesn't allow anything to enter the intersection. So whereas previously, if this was a regular signal, you can see that because nothing's in the yellow, uh, the yellow block here, a train could enter this yellow block and it would get caught up here, blocking the intersection. So that is what you would want chain signals for. And the way that you want to use chain signals, a basic rule of thumb is you have to have enough room after a signal to house an entire length of whatever length of train that you're using. So if you're using a longer length train and you're placing down your signals, if there is any situation where a train cannot fit in between two signals, you need to make that a chain signal. So for example, if I was using the longer trains in the system, this would have to be a chain signal. And it does slow things down a bit because even if something is all the way over here, it needs to wait way back there until it clears. Um, and so that's why it's important to really know the length of your train before you start doing this. Um, so let's say that the train was exactly this length and that would be perfect. That's basically what you would want to build your system around. So instead of building um, your system and then just having some random length train, you want to figure out the length of your train or multiple trains and whatever the longest train that you're using, you need to build your system around that. So in this system, I would want to have a, a train that is no longer than the distance between these two intersections here. 
so that there's no holdup in between the intersections. Okay, so I've set up the tracks so that one of these signals is blocked while another is open. So as you can see, the chain signal in front is actually showing a yellow light. Now this means exactly what I just said. One or more of the options is blocked and one of them is open. So you could have three or four options and it would still show yellow as long as one or more are blocked. If all is blocked, it would just show red. If all are open, it would just show white. So I placed a train down there to block it. And as you can see, these are still white because it's a regular signal. Um, I've also shortened this train down just for um, this system, which is not built for a longer train. So it comes through here, it can go through here, red until it passes past this train signal. So if I were to pass left here, you can see that it turns white once I pass this signal. So let me come back here and it'll turn yellow again. So if this train was automated, for example, and it saw the yellow, it would know that if it needed to go down a path that was red, it wouldn't be able to, and it would stop at this chain signal. If it needed to go down a path that was open, it would continue just like this. And as you can see, like I said before, if both of them are red, the one in the front will be red. So that's how this works. Not too hard to understand. Um, and then I just want to talk about the merge a little bit. So the merge works the same exact way if something is occupying a space in front then both of these chain signals will not allow a train to go through um, and that's exactly how you want it to work now with a small train like this um, you could potentially have it so that these are regular signals because like i said if you can fit a train in between two signals then you don't really need a chain signal so i could make this a oh, whoopsie I can make this a regular signal and work just fine. The only difference is that trains would stop inside of the intersection than before it. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, it really depends on what you are okay with. If you want to, if you want trains to never be in an intersection, you could definitely put down um, these as chain signals. And in other cases, you'll, I'll, I'll show you later, um, you would actually need some extra signals to, to do that. Okay, so let's get into some examples. Um, I have this example that I used in the previous video as well, and I'm just gonna do it again, but with the use of chain signals. So the signaling is almost identical as before. You're gonna have a signal before and after every intersection, just like this, on every direction that it can go. Before, before, after, before before after so as you can see it has the same exact block scheme that was shown in the previous video um, but this time we're going to be using chain signals so what i said before if the if the train can pass all the way through and continue on so if this was longer and it could fit an entire train then you want it to be a normal signal so generally in almost all your cases, unless you have very tight packed intersections, you're gonna want the last signal on a rail to be a regular signal. Now, if you come back here, you don't want a train to be in this intersection, so you're gonna make that a chain signal, and you don't want a train to be in this intersection, so you're gonna make that a chain signal. So if you would notice, I have three signals here, and it's basically like a snake. That's how you would want to think about it. You have a regular signal as the head of the snake, and then two chain signals as the body. And then the last one is still a chain signal. So if I go through and really quickly just make the rest of these, this is how it would look. So if you're following one path, you want a chain signal, chain signal, and then the last one is a regular signal. You pick any other path, chain, chain, regular, and then chain, chain, regular. So it's not too hard, especially in this example, but I'm gonna be going over some other examples too. 
Okay, so let me walk through a T-junction. So if we're using what I said before, you would want one before. Let me put that nice and close. One before, and you would follow through, you know, after the merge, before a merge, after a uh, merge. And then you'd want to go back and do these ones, just like that. And then you would look at it, you'd say, okay, so this is the head of the snake, body, body, body. Um, and this is okay, it'll work. Um, these two, this would be a chain, but, um, so this'll work, but you can make it a lot more efficient. You can do this only using three chain signals, uh, three signals. So if I go through here, I could skip that first one put one in here and one right here this does the same exact thing the only difference is that you don't have a beginning and an end and then I merge these two so in this situation a train would come along it would read if it wanted to go left it'd read a chain signal which I'll do the regular signals in a bit and it would stop here if it can't go through if it wanted to go straight it would stop here if it can't go through and that's completely fine. Uh, like I said before, if you really don't want trains to be waiting inside of an intersection, place one of these here, chain signal, and uh, you're good. So this is how you'd want to do this uh, section. Now let's go to another side of the track and let's follow it again using the same logic. So we have this here, this here. Let's do another merge here. Right, like this. And I think that is everything. So then you'd want to follow back. You put all your signals down, then you go back and look for what needs to be a chain signal. So you follow each path. And this has two. This is the last signal, so you leave it. And this is the previous signal, so you want that to be a chain. This is the last signal, so you leave it. And that is this direction done. And you come to the next direction you want to take a right that's a regular signal you want to take a if you want to go straight um no nope, wrong signal uh so that would be this one that's a chain and then this would be regular or this would be regular sorry so that one's done then you come from this direction you have one that goes straight so that's a regular then you have one that goes left that's chain because there's another signal in front and then this is the head of the snake so that was regular so this is how you'd want to do it you should have three chain signals and it should kind of resemble a triangle here those are the three points kind of connect them up and you can make this prettier and do whatever but this is the absolute most efficient that you can get with a this intersection so as before um, I had a lot of random signals and trains would wait in the center and all that. But with this system, um, all the trains would be waiting before the intersection if there's something in the middle. And then they would go through and nothing would, would collide. And this is the most efficient. So lastly, I just want to go over uh, something in the previous video that I showed, which is a four-way junction with three options for the trains. Now I didn't signal the last video, and in this video when I was signaling this I actually spread the tracks apart just so I'd have more room to look at everything going on just because you can already see how complicated this will get. Um, I'm not going to be doing this on video, but if you really wanted to see me signal this junction, um, I'll make an entire separate video just doing that. Alright, so a couple things that I want to go over is if you look at the kind of patterns that I've made with the signals you can see that in this area here i have three tracks going over each other at once and they kind of make this triangle shape um, trying to get this out of the way so you can see better but if you look at that green right up there you can see that kind of triangle shape and this is the exact shape that is made in a t-junction so when you have three tracks passing same exact shape so you can see i've got like four of those here and then also right here i have a regular um, junction just two tracks going past each other and you can see kind of how I signal this 
So I split it up into those kind of sections, which is what you'd want to do. And uh, ooh, wrong side. So what I'm going to do right now is just point out what each signal would be. So this one is going away. So that would be regular, regular. Uh, this one's going straight. So chain, 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 regular going through. And then this one on the going left is chain, chain, regular going through. And you can go through and you can do any of the signals. You can pick out each one. So that's a chain. That's a chain, chain, uh, chain, regular, regular, chain, chain, regular. And once you get it good at this stuff, it it comes pretty natural. Um, but this is how you would, or just one example of how you would signal a junction like this. So I know this video was fairly complicated. If you need any help, feel free to ask questions in the comments or check out the previous video for some more basic concepts. But otherwise, thanks for watching and I hope this helped you out. And I'll see you next time. Bye.